Hey guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Today I thought I would talk about why I got my GED and what that was like and how that's worked out for me. Spoiler alert, I'm still alive, so it's pretty good. So I was uh, 15 years old when I decided I didn't want to go to high school anymore, and part of it was that high school was really boring, and the other part was that the kids that I went to school with were really mean. I was tired of being picked on, I was tired of being bored, so I tried going to an alternative school for a little while, which was a nightmare. Uh, in some places they have really cool alternative schools, uh, where I grew up, that was not the case. The alternative school was like an outlet for kids that were in drug rehabilitation or were being released from juvie or a halfway house. Most of my classmates had criminal records or drug histories, or they were there because they had like stabbed their teacher and they weren't allowed to come back to school. Obviously I fit in really well there. Um, I have never smoked pot. I have never stabbed anybody, so we had a lot in common, clearly, and um, I was basically afraid of my classmates every day that I went to school, so I really didn't like going to school there, and I decided I wanted to go ahead and just get my GED and get it over with, and also decided that after I got my GED, I would be an artist because I was really good at Photoshop, so I was pretty sure I had it all figured out. And naturally this was music to my parents' ears and they were really just elated to hear that that was my plan for life. Sarcasm aside, um, yeah, no, they told me that I would have to get a job or I would have to go to college, that they weren't going to support me to just like sit on my butt all day and not do anything, which I found kind of offensive because when have I ever been a butt sitter? They also told me that I was uh, never going to amount to anything. I wouldn't be able to get into college. I wouldn't be able to get a job. I was going to be a loser. Yeah, you know. If you've ever had this conversation with your parents, you've probably heard similar things. This is, by the way, parent tip, not the way to react to that kind of information from your child. Because, of course, the next thing that I did was find, like, the nearest adult that would tell me that I wasn't a loser and I wasn't doomed. And that happened to be a 27-year-old skinhead. So maybe don't do that to your kids. Luckily, I realized uh, about the time I got my GED that you can't fix a skinhead, so that didn't last. I, I did get my GED and I took a math class so that I could get a higher score on my GED. And I scored pretty high, all things considered. Now, when you have a GED and you apply to college, they want to see a copy of your test scores. And since my test scores were pretty high, I've never had a problem getting into anything. I applied to three or four different colleges ranging from art schools to community colleges and also a university and I was accepted at all of them. I didn't attend all of them, but I was accepted everywhere that I applied. So that that wasn't an issue. And that was 14 years ago, 15 years ago, 16 years ago. That was a long time ago, kids. So like things have changed since then. And I think in general, the world is more accepting of a GED now than they were even back then. The only place where I was ever rejected because I had a GED was for a part-time retail position at Old Navy, and I was mostly rejected because I wasn't a cheerleader, which I realize is discriminatory, but 16-year-old me didn't get that and really didn't want to work at Old Navy anyway, so yeah. Now I don't shop at Old Navy because does it need an explanation? Also, the clothing sucks. So the only thing I was ever rejected for was a part-time job that nobody aspires to anyway. I got into school. I went to school. I waited until I was 19 to go to college because it's really hard to like get an apartment and you can't have a credit card and car insurance is tricky and things like that when you are like 15 or 16 and living on your own. So, and I really wasn't sure if I wanted to go to art school or not. So I waited and I I'm glad that I did wait because then I had enough sense after the first year to go, you know what? I don't really want to go to college anymore. And I saved myself a whole bunch of money by also dropping out of college. So, sweet. And I know that there's people that will listen to this and they'll get upset because it's survivorship bias and they'll tell you like, oh, hey, you're only talking about this because everything turned out fine for you. And... That might be true. Maybe I wouldn't tell people that my life was terrible because I had a GED, but uh, 
I'm pretty sure like a quarter of Lifetime movies start with someone getting a GED. I'm pretty sure there's probably lots of books on Amazon about people who have a GED and their life did not go well. If you've ever been to public school, you've probably been to at least one assembly where there was a presentation from a guest speaker who was like, I got my GED and I spent 25 years trapped in human trafficking or something. You know, there's plenty of horror stories about that kind of stuff. And if there wasn't, there wouldn't be these stereotypes that people who have a GED are stupid. So after getting my GED, I started doing like creative gigs. So I used my Photoshop skills that I was pretty confident about before I got my GED. And I did things like make logos and edit photographs for photographers. And that got me into editing portfolios for models themselves. And I did some stuff making graphics for websites. And eventually I got into animation and I used to animate some little flash cartoons and things that you may have seen on websites like eBombs World way back in the day. These days, I don't do any of that, but I did go to college for animation. Ultimately, my parents did eventually come around. Uh, my grandmother, I think, was like the first one to be like, you know what, actually, you're not stupid. And she actually bought me my first real printer and signed me up for my first art show where I sold all of my artwork like every single day. And I think that was when she saw that I wasn't completely stupid and out of my mind and full of dumb ideas. So she's always been pretty behind me in my artwork since then. Some other family members have like taken a little bit longer. And it's funny to me because, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm somewhat successful. Like I live in a really decent house. I own it. Weird flex, but this is the second house I've owned. You know, they told us millennial kids that if we didn't go to college and we kept eating the avocado toast, we couldn't own homes. Well, joke's on them because I've had two homes now and I'm working on getting my third. So mic drop, but not really because it was expensive. Obviously, I'm not like mega rich and mega famous. I have a decent life. I don't, you know, I'm not like wealthy beyond my wildest dreams. It's not like I dropped out of high school and became a CEO of like a grillion dollar company or something. I have worked really hard and I've perfected some skills. I've learned a lot of things along the way. And that time that I wasn't in high school gave me a chance to try some different creative jobs and find out what I really wanted to do when I grew up. I'm not making this video to try and like encourage you to go and quit high school and just like do whatever you want because, you know, it may not work out for you. And I don't want you to be like, wow, my life sucks because this chick on YouTube told me it would be great. But I'm telling you about what happened to me because sometimes I get comments from people who I think are young people and they seem confused about what to do with their life and they feel like if they do something that their parents don't like, their parents are going to hate them forever and they might fail at it and whatever. And I sometimes get comments in person from people who want to know if it really worked out for me when I dropped out of high school and like, yeah, it did. And then everything's been fine. I got married, not to a skinhead. And I mean, he is bald, but you know, I live in a really nice house in the suburbs. I have my own kid who is almost nine years old. So I mean, for like nine entire years, I've kept another human being alive. So I can't be so stupid. Right. I, did go to college. I have worked for other people. Yeah, I've never actually had to have any kind of a degree or a diploma to work as an artist. And it's kind of a cliche. There's, of course, some jobs as an artist where you will need those things. Like if you want to be like a historian or a curator or work like as a conservator, you might need those things. But if you're not working within the academic realm or like not working in, you know, wanting to go work for like the Smithsonian or something, you probably don't really need those things. And doors don't just start slamming shut all around you because you don't have them. If you, for some reason, find yourself in a position in life where you don't have any choices except to get a GED, I want you to know that your life isn't over. Because what our society doesn't like to admit is that there's a lot of reasons why people don't finish high school. Maybe you're a child of migrant workers, or maybe you're disabled or chronically ill, like I was. Maybe 
you just have a mental health issue and it's difficult to go to school, maybe you're bullied, maybe you just hate school because you know what? It's totally normal and fine to not like school. School is a really small part of your life and we put way too much emphasis on how important it is in my opinion. It's good to have an education. Education is important. You should get that somewhere, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a traditional school. And I think we sort of, as a society and as an American culture, have put way too much weight on academic success and attending school. And there's just some people that, for one reason or another, that's not realistic, it's not achievable, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you find yourself too ill to go to school or in a living situation where you just can't get to school, your life isn't over just because you have a GED. I, of course, have not written the next Harry Potter, but then neither have the other 7 billion people on this planet that aren't JK Rowling. But I still am successful in the ways that matter to me. I have a family, I have a home that's safe and clean and I live in it, and I own it and I don't have to deal with like a landlord or noisy, crappy apartment neighbors. So I want you to know that if you're one of those kids that finds yourself in a situation that's just beyond your control, whether you're chronically ill or your parents are not stable enough for you to stay in one place long enough to finish school, or something like that is going on, your life isn't ruined. You're not going to start out in life being a loser. You're going to start out in life exactly where everyone else starts out in life, which is like zero. You don't get bonus money just because you have a high school diploma. And at this point in my life, I'm living better than a lot of people that I knew that graduated from high school and went to college. We like to tell kids, and I think honestly, it's because there's so many private colleges that are for profit. It's marketed to children, to teenagers. You need to go to school or you won't be able to make enough money to live on. The reality is that there's trade school, there's apprenticeships, there's going out and learning a skill and just practicing it and getting really good at it so that you can make money doing that. And there are lots of fields like that where you don't have to have a college degree or even a high school diploma in order to be successful and have a decent living. Now in the interest of full disclosure, my husband is seven years older than me. So in some ways that's been a help up, but realistically he was in the military for six or seven of those years. So that kind of sets you back behind your peers. So in a lot of ways, it's not really like he's older than me. He graduated from high school. He went to college. He also went to trade school. And then after all of that and working in lots of jobs over the years, he has a certificate in phlebotomy and he drew blood for a long time and he didn't really like doing that. So he got a, another certificate and his commercial driver's license. And now he drives semi-trucks. And he makes a lot more money than a lot of our friends who went to college and still have student loan debt. We don't have student loan debt. I'm not suggesting that everybody should do what I did, but I want you to know that if you find yourself having to make those same decisions and you're hearing a lot of people telling you, hey, you know what? You're going to be a loser. You're an idiot. No one's ever going to let you do anything with your life. I've been there. It worked out fine. I'm very happy with the life that I have and I wouldn't trade it for anything. No, I'm not a grillionaire living in a mansion, but do I want a mansion? Not really. That sounds like a lot of work. And since sometimes these things go hand in hand, if you find yourself considering dropping out of school because you're bullied or you're struggling with mental health, I want you to know that I love you and I care about you. You can reach the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255, 24 hours a day. Or you can visit stompoutbullying.org for resources on mental health, free counseling, hotlines you can call, people who will help you. Thanks for listening to my story, and I hope that it helps you out if you're in the same situation. You can view more of my art at spellboundbrush.com. I do sell prints of my art, and that is basically how I make my living now that I am a loser with a GED. So, peace. (laughs) I just made metal hands, not peace hands. Whatever.